Well, welcome to the Main Bible Study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today, and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. We're going to open with our opening prayer first, and then we will begin uh, with the New American Standard Bible, First Chronicles chapters 1 through 14 this week. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability to be here together to study your word. We love your word, Father God, and we know your word is faithful. It is holy. It is true, just as you are. And we just can count on you for everything. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to the word that we're reading and hearing. Show us fresh revelation. Show us what it is that we need to grasp and integrate into our very being and our walk with the Lord. Father God, we thank you for all that you do, all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do. And may your glory cover this earth and push back the wickedness and the evil. Just thank you. We give you all of our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the name above all names, the mightiest name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Now, Chronicles was also a is also a double book. It had been one at one book at one time, one scroll, I should say, uh, and it was divided. We had Samuel, we had Kings and Chronicles. They were all they're all double books that had once been one full scroll. So we're going to begin the first half of this uh, of uh, Chronicles with First Chronicles, the first book of the Chronicles, Genealogy from Adam, Chapter One: Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shemham, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Mag- Magog, Madai, J- Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Diphath, and Togarma. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, and Sabtika. And the sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush became the father of Nimrod. And we know Nimrod really wasn't a good guy, but he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Mizram became the father of the people of Lud, Anam, Lehab, Neftuf, Pathras, Kathia, from which the Philistines came, and Kathor. Canaan became the father of Sidon, his firstborn Heth, and the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Girgashites. The Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Arvidites, the Zemarites, and the Hamathites. The sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arbakshad, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Meshach. Arbakshad became the father of Shea and Shelah, and became the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The, the name of the one was Peleg, for in his days, the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Jachtan. Jachtan became the father of Almodad, Sheleth, Hazarmaveth, and Jera, Hadram, Uzal, Dikla, Ebal, Abimel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Jachtan, Shem, Arpachshad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Ru. Sarah, Nahor, Terah, Abram, that is Abraham. Terah was Abraham's father. The sons, descendants of Abraham. The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their genealogies. The firstborn of Ishmael was Nebioth, then Kedar, Abdil, Mibsim, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima. Jeter, Nafish, and 
Kedemah, these were the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, whom she bore, were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. And the sons of Jokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephur, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were the sons of Keturah. Keturah. And Abraham became the father of Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. Remember, that was Jacob, and, and God renamed him Israel. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Rul, Jush, Jalem, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zephi, Gatim, Kenaz, Timnah, and Amalek. The dreaded Amalek, Amalek, Am Amalekites, Amalek. The sons of Rul were Nahath, Zerah, Shama. And Miz Miza, the sons of Seir were Lotan, Shobel, Zibian, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Homam, and Lotan's sister was Timna. The sons of Shobel were Alian, Menahath, Ebal, Shephi, and Onim. And the sons of Zibian were Ea and Anna. And the sons of Anna were Dishan, and the sons of Dishan were Hamran. Eshban, Ithran, and Keran, and that's C H E R A N. The sons of Ezer were, Bil were Bilhan, Zavan, and Jachan, and the sons of Dishan were Uz and Aaron. Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king of the sons of Israel reigned. Bela was the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinhaba. When Bela died, Joba, Johab, I'm sorry, Jobab, the son of Zerab, was Basra, became king in his place. When Jobab died, Husham, the, the land of the Temanites, became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad, the son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the field of Moab, became king in his place. And the name of his city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samia of Masrachah became king in his place. When Samia died, Shal of Rehoboth by the river became king in his place. When Shal died, Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, became king in his place. When Baal Han Hanan died, Hadad became king in his place. And the name of his city was Paya, Paya that's P A I. And his wife's name was Mehetabel. Meh the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mizahab. Then Hadad died. Now the chiefs of Edom were Chief Timnah, Chief Eliah, Chief Jetheth, Chief Ohalabamah, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Chief Kenaz, Chief Timan, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdiel, Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom. So chapter two, the genealogy, the 12 sons of Jacob or Israel. These are the sons of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, and Sheleth. These three were born to him by Bathshua, the Canaanitess. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, so he put him to death. Tamar, his daughter-in-law, bore him. Perez and Zira, Judah had five sons in all, because Perez and, and Zira were his uh, sons. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Ham Hamel. The sons of Zira were Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Kelpol, and Dara, five of them in all. The son of Carmi was Akar, the troubler of Israel who violated the band. The son of Ethan was Azariah. Genealogy of David, now the sons of Hezron, who were born to him, or Jer Jeremiel, Ram, and Kelebai. Caleb and Ram became the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab became the father of Nashon, leader of the sons of Judah. Nashon became the father of Salma. Salma became the father of Boaz, and Boaz became the father of Obed, and Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse became the father of Eliab, his firstborn, then Abinadab the second, Shemaiah the third, Nathanael the fourth, R Radai the fifth, 
the fifth, Ozan the sixth, and David was the seventh, and their sisters were Zeruah and Abigail. And the three sons were Zeruah, were Abishai, Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail bore Amasa, and the father of Amasa was Jethro the Ishmaelite. Now Caleb, the son of Hezron, had sons by Azubah, his wife, and, his, and by Jeria, and these were her sons, Jeshur, Shobab, and Ardon. When Azubah died, Caleb married Ephrath, who bore him her. Her became the father of Uri, and Uri became the father of Bezalel. Afterward, Hezron went in to the daughter of Machir, the father of Gilead, whom he married when he was 60 years old, and she bore him Zegub. Zegub, Zegub became the father of Jer, who had 23 cities in the land of Gilead. But Jeshur and Aram took the towns of Jer from them, with Kenneth and his villages, even 60 cities. All these were the sons of Machir, the father of Gilead. After the death of Hezron and Caleb, Ephrathah, Abijah, Hezron's wife, bore him Ashur, the father of Tekoa. Now the sons of Jeremiel, the firstborn of Hezron, were Ram, the firstborn, then ben, Benu, I'm sorry, ben, ben, Bana, that's B-U-N-A-H, Oren, Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had another wife whose name was Atarah, and she was the mother of Onem. The sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeremiel, were Maz, Maaz, I'm sorry, M-A-A-Z, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onem were Shammai and Jada, and the sons of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. The name of Abishur's wife was Abihail, and she bore him Aban and Molid, and the sons of Nadab were Seled and Apiam. And Selah died without sons. The sons of Apiam were Ishi, and the sons of Ishi were Shashan, and the sons of Shashan was Alai. And the sons of Jadah, the brother of Shammai, were Jether and Jonathan, and Jether died without sons. The sons of Jonathan were Peleth and Zaza, and these were the sons of Jeremiel. Now, Shishan had no sons, only daughters. And Shishan had an Egyptian servant whose name was Jarha. Shishan gave his daughter to, to Jarha his servant in marriage, and she bore him a Ataiah. Ataiah became the father of Nathan, and Nathan became the father of Zabed. And Zabed became the father of Ethlel, and Ethlel became the father of Obed, and Obed became the father of Jehu. Jehu became the father of Azariah, and Azariah became the father of Helez, and Helez became the father of Elisa, and Elisa became the father of Sismai, and Sisma became the father of Shalom, and Shalom became the father of Jechamiah, and Jechamiah became the father of Elishama. Now the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiah, were, were Misha, his firstborn, who was the father of Ziph, and his son was Merishah, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron were Korah, and Tepua, and Rechem, and Shema. Shema became the father of Raham, and the father of Jorkim, and Rechem became the father of Shemaiah. The son of Shemaiah was Maon, and Maon was the father of Besser. Epha, Caleb's concubine, bore Haran, Moza, and Gazaz, and Haran became the father of Gazaz. The sons of Jadai were Regem, Jotham, Gishan, Helet, Epha, and Shah. Maka, Caleb's concubine, bore Sheber and Terhana. She also bore Shaph, the father of Madmanah, and Shiva, the father of Machbanah, and the father of Gibeah, and the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb, the sons of Hur, the firstborn Ephrathah, were Shobal, the, the father of Kiriath Jerem, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, and Kareth the father of Beth Gedar. Shovel, the father of Kirith Jerem, had sons Haraway, half of the Menahathites, and the families of the Kirith Jerem, the Ithrites, and the Puthites, the Shumathites, 
and the Mishraites. From these came the Zorathites and the Eshtaothites. The sons of Salma were Bethlehem and the Netophethites, Atroth, Beth, Joab, and half of Men, Menhethites and Zorites. The families of scribes who lived at Jabez were Terathites, the Shimeathites, and the Sukites. Those are the Kenites who came from Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. Chapter 3, the family of David. Now these were the sons of David who were born to him in Hebron. The firstborn was Amnon by Ahinoam, the Jezreelite. The second was Daniel by Abigail, the Carmelite, Titus. The third was Absalom of Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Jeshur. The fourth, of Ad the fourth was Adonijah, the son of Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah by Abitol. The, the sixth was Ithram by his wife at Eglah. Six were born to him in Hebron, and there he reigned seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years. These were born to him in Jerusalem, Shemaiah, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon, four by four, by Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel, and Ibhar, El Elishama, Elephet, Nogath, Nepheg, and Japhia, Elishama, Eli Eliada, and Elephet, nine. All these were the sons of David, besides the sons of the concubines, and Tamar was their sister. Now Solomon's sons was Rehoboam, Abijah was his son, Asa his son, Je Jehoshaphat his son, Joram his son, Ahaziah his son, Joash his son, Amaziah his son, Azariah his son, Jotham his son, Ahaz his son, Hezekiah his son, Manasseh his son, Amon his son, Josiah his son, the sons of Josiah were Johanan the firstborn, and the second was Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, the fourth Shalom. The sons of Jehoiakim were Jeconiah, his son, Zedekiah, his son. The sons of Jeconiah, the prisoner, were Shealtiel, his son, and Melchiram, Pedai, and Shenazar, Jechemiah, Hoshema, and Ned. Ned Nedabiah, the sons of Pedai, were Zerubbabel and Shemaiah, and the sons of Zerubbabel were Meshalom and Hananiah, and Shelameth was their sister, and Hashbua, Hashuba, I'm sorry, Othel, Bechariah, Hasadiah, and Jushab, Hased, five. The sons of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jeshiah, the sons of Rephaiah, the sons of Arnon, the sons of Obadiah, the sons of Shechaniah. The descendants of Shechaniah were Shemaiah, and the sons of Shemaiah, Hatush, Egal, Bariah, Neriah, Shephat, Six. The sons of Neriah were Elio, Aniah, Hizkiah, and Az Azrakim, Three. The sons of Elioniah were Hodaviah, Eliashib, and Peliah, Akub, Johanan, Deliah, and Anina, seven. Chapter four, the line of Hur, Asher. The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Reiah, the sons of Shobal, Shobal, became the father of Jashath, Jahath, and Jahath became the father of Ahumai and Lahad. These were the families of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Eth Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazaleponi. Has, I'm sorry, Hazaleponi. Um, Penuel was the father of Gedor and Ezer, the father of Hushba, Husha, and these were the sons of her, the firstborn of Ephrathah, the father of Bethlehem. Asher, the son of Tekoa, had two wives, Hila and Nara. Nara bore him Ahuzam, Hefer, Temani, and Hahashtari, and these were the sons of Nara. The sons of Hila were Zerath, Izhar, and Ethnan, 
and Coz became the father of Anub and Zobiba and the families of Aharahel, the son of Haram. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother named him Jabez, be saying, because I bore him with pain. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. Caleb, and that's C-H-E-L-U-B, the brother of Shuha, became the father of Meher, who was the father of Eshton. Eshton became the father of Beth Rapha and Pesia and Tahina, the father of Ur Nahash. These are the men of Rekah. Now the sons of Kenaz were Othniel and Sarai, and the sons of Othniel were Hath Hatheth and Menonatai. And Menonatai became the father of Ophra, and Sarai became the father of Joab, the father of Geharashim, for they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb, the sons of Jephunneh, were Iru, Elah, and Nam. And the son of Elah was Kenaz. The son of Jahalel were Ziph and Zipha, Tiria and Aserel. The sons of Ez, Ez, Ezra were Jether, Merad, Ephor, and Jalon. And these are the sons of Biphia, the daughter of Pharaoh, who married to and she conceived and bore Miriam, Shemaiah, Ishba, and the father of Eshtemoa. His Jewish wife bore Jared, the father of Gedor, the, and Heber, the son of Soko, and Jacothiel, the, the father of Zanoa. And the sons of the wife of Hodiah, the sister of Nathan, were the fathers of Kila. And the, that was the Garmite and Eshtemoa, the Maccathite. The sons of, Sh of Shimon were Amnon and Rina, Ben Hanan and Tilan. And the sons of Ishi were Zoheth and Ben Zoheth. The sons of Shelah, the sons of Judah, were Ur, the father of Lika and Leda, the father of Merisha, and the families of the house of the. Of the linen workers at Beth Ash Ashbia, and Jochim, the men of Kazaba, Joash, Sarah, who ruled in Moab, and Jeshubi, Laham, and the records are ancient. These were the potters and the inhabitants of Netam and Gedera. They lived there with the king for his work. Descendants of Simeon, now the sons of Simeon, were Nemuel and Jamin, Jerob and Zira, and Shal, Shalom his son, Mibsam his son, Mishma his son, the sons of Mishma were Hamuel his son, Zachar his son, Shimei his son. Now Shimei has 16 sons and six daughters, but his brothers did not have many sons, nor did all their family multiply like the sons of Judah. They lived at Beersheba. Moladah and Hazar Shua, and Bilha, Ezam, Tol, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markobath, Hazar Susan, Beth Biri, and Sharam. These were the, their cities until the reign of David. Their villages were Etam, Ain, Rimon, Token, and Ashen, five cities. And all their villages that were around the same cities as far as ba Baal, and these were their settlements, and they have their genealogy. Meshobab and Jam Jamlak, and Josha, the son of Amaziah, and Joel, and Jehu, the son of Joshabiah, and the son Sarai, the son of Esiel. And Elione, Jacobah, Jeshohiah, and Asiah, and Adiel, Jeshemiel, Benaiah, Ziza, the son of Shephi, the son of Elion, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by names were leaders in their families, and their father's house increased greatly. They went to the entrance of 
Gidor even to the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks. They found rich and good pasture, and the land was broad and quiet and peaceful for those who lived were formerly were with the Hamites. These recorded by name came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and attacked their tents. And the Munites, and that's M E U N I T E S, who were found there and destroyed them utterly to this day and lived in their place because there was pasture there for their flocks. From them, from the sons of Simeon, 500 men went to Mount Seir with Pelatiah, Neriah, Raphael, and Uziel, the sons of Ishi, as their leaders. They destroyed the remnant of the Amalekites who escaped and have lived there to this day. Now, chapter 5 is the genealogy of Reuben. Now, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but decided he, def he defiled his father's bed. His birthright was given to the sons of jo Joseph, the sons of Israel, so that he is not enrolled in the genealogy according to the birthright. Though Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came the leader, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hannah and Palu, Hezron and Carmi, and the sons of Joel were Shemaiah, his son Gog, his son, Shemaiah, his son, Shemaiah his son, Micah his son, Rea his son, and Baal his son, Bera his son, whom Tilgath Pilsner, king of Assyria, carried away into exile. He was leader of the Reubenites, his kinsmen by their families. In the genealogy, other generations were Je okay, Jael, the chief. And then Zechariah, and Bela, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who lived in Aror, even to Nebo and Baal Meon. To the east, he settled as far as the entrance of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their cattle had increased in the land of Gilead. In the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagrites, who fell by their hand, so that they occupied their tents throughout all the land east of, of Gilead. Now the sons of Gad lived opposite them in the land of Bashan, as far as Selica. Joel was the chief, uh, and Shapham the second, then Janiah and Shapha in Bashan. Their kinsmen, as their father's household, were Michael, Meshalam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachan, Zia, and Eber, seven. These were the sons of Abihel, the son of Huri, the son of Jeroa, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshashai, the son of Jado, the son of Buz. Ahi, the son of Abdiel, the son of Buni, was head of their father's households. They lived in Gilead in Bashan and in its towns and in, in the, all the pasture lands of Sharon as far as their borders. All of these were enrolled in the genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel, the sons of Reuben, and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, consisting of valiant men who bore shield and sword and shot with bow, were skillful in battle, were 44,760 who went to war. They made war against the Hagrites, Jeter, Naphish, and, and Nodab. Um, they were helped against them, and the Hagrites and all who were with them were given into their hand, for they cried out to God in the battle, and he answered their prayers because they trusted in him. They took away their cattle, their 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 men. For many fell slain because the war, war was of God, and they settled in their place until the exile. Now the sons of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon and Sanir and Mount Hermon, they were numerous. These were the heads of their father's household, even Ephor, Ishi, Elil, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadil, mighty men of valor, famous men, heads of their father's households. But they acted treacherously against God, the God of their fathers, and played the harlot after the gods of the peoples of the land 
whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, even the spirit of Tilgath, Pilnasar, king of Assyria, and he carried them away into exile, namely the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hela, Habor, Hera, and to the river of Gozan to this day. Chapter 6, the genealogy, the priestly line. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath were Amron, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The children of Amron were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. And the sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar became the father of Phineas, and Phineas became the father of Abishua, and Abishua became the father of Buki, and Buki became the father of Uzi, and Uzi became the father of Zerahiah, and Zerahiah became the father of Marioth, and Marioth became the father of Amariah, and Amariah became the father of, of Ahitob, and Ahitob became the father of Zadok, and Zadok became the father of Ahimaz. And Ahimaaz became the father of Azariah, and Azariah became the father of Johanan, and Johanan became the father of Azariah. It was he who served as the priest in the house which Solomon built in Jerusalem. And Azariah became the father of Amariah, and Amariah became the father of Ahitab, and Ahitab became the father of Zadok, and Zadok became the father of Shalom, and Shalom became the father of Hilkiah, and Hilkiah became the father of Azariah, and Azariah became the father of Theriah, and Theriah became the father of Jehozadak, and Jehozadak went along when the Lord carried Judah and Jerusalem away into exile by Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi were Gershom, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershom, Libni, and Shemaiah. Shemaiah. And the sons of Kohath were Amron, Ish, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi, and these are the families of the Levites according to their father's households. Of Gershom, Libni Lib his son, Jehath his son, Zima his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zira his son, Jithariah his son, the sons of Kohath were Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Aser his son, Elkanah his son, Ebiasaph his son, and Aser his son. Tehath his son, Uriel his son, Uzziah his son, and Shal his son. The sons of Elkina were Amasiah and Ahimoth. As for Elkina, the sons of Elkina were Zophai his son and Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeraham his son, Elkina his son. The sons of Samuel were Joel the firstborn, and Abijah the second. The sons of Merari were Mali, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Uzzah, his son, Shimei, his son, Haggai, his son, Messiah, his son. Now, these are those whom David appointed over the service of song in the house of the Lord after the ark rested there. They ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and they served in their office according to their order. These are those who served with their sons from the sons of the Kohathites were Heman the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkina, the son of Jeraham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuf, the son of Elkina, the son of Mehath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkina, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Aser, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Heman's brother Asaph stood at his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Berechiah, the son of Shimei. Now, we see Asaph's name on a lot of the Psalms, too. Um, so I just want to mention Asaph there is, is listed. The, the son of Michael, the son of Baisaiah, the son of Melchijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah. So Baisaiah is it's a strange spelling. B A A S E I A H. Okay. This okay. And the son of Mel Melchijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adalah. 
Adaiah, A-D-A-I-A-H, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimea, the son of Jahath, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi, on the left hand where were their kinsmen, the sons of Merari, Ethan, the son of Kishi, the son of Ab Abdi, the son of Melech, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shamir, Shamar, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. The kinsmen, the Levites, were appointed for all the service of the tabernacle of the house of God that Aaron and his sons offered on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense for all the work of the most holy place and to make atonement for Israel according to all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These are the sons of Aaron, Eliezer his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son, Buki his son. Now remember, the first two sons were struck down for introducing strange fire, so they did not live. So it was Eliezer and Ithamar. So this is from the descendants of going down the line from Eleazar to Phineas. Okay. Tabuki his son, Uzi his son, Zerahiah his son, Marioth his son, Amariah his son, Ahitab his son, Zadok his son, Ahimaz his son. Now, these are their settlements according to their camp within the borders to the sons of Aaron of the families of the Kohathites for their theirs was the first lot. To them they gave Hebron in the land of Judah and its pasture lands around it. But the fields of the city and, the, and its villages they gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. To the sons of Aaron they gave the following cities of refuge. Hebron, Libna, also with its pasture lands, J J Jeter, Eshtemoa, and with its pastures, pasture lands. Hil Hillen, with its pasture lands, Debur, with its pasture lands, Ashan with its pasture lands, and Beth Shemash with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Benjamin, Geba with its pasture lands, Alemath with its pasture lands, and Anathoth with its pasture lands, all their cities throughout their families with 13 cities. Then to the rest of the sons of Kohath were given by lot from the family of the tribe, from the half tribe, the half of Manasseh, 10 cities to the sons of Gershom, according to their families, were given from the tribe of Issachar, from the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Manasseh, 13 cities in Bashan. To the sons of Merari were given by lot according to their families from the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Zebulun, 12 cities. So the sons of Israel gave to the Levites the cities with their pasture lands. They gave by lot from the tribe of the sons of Judah, the tribe of the sons of Simeon, and the tribe of the sons of Benjamin, these cities which are mentioned by name. Now, some of the families of the sons of Kohath had cities of their territory from the tribe of Ephraim. They gave to them the following cities of refuge. Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim with its pasture lands. Gezer also with its pasture lands. Jachmim with its pasture lands. Beth Aron with its pasture lands. Ajalon with its pasture lands. And Gath Rimon with its pasture lands. And from the half tribe of Manasseh, Aner with its pasture lands. And Bilim with its pasture lands for the rest of the family of the sons of Kohath to the sons of Gershom were given from the family of the half tribe of Manasseh, Golan and the Bashan with its pasture lands, and Ashtaroth with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Issachar, Kadesh with its pasture lands, Debarath with its pasture lands, and Ram Ramoth with its pasture lands, Anam with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its pas pasture lands, Abdon with its pasture lands. Hukok with its pasture lands, and Rehob with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with its pasture lands, Haman with its pasture lands, and Kirathaim with its pasture lands. To the rest of the Levites, the sons of Merari were given from the tribe of Zebulun, Ramona, Ramona with its pasture lands, Tabor with its pasture lands, and beyond the Jordan at Jericho on the east side of the Jordan were given them from the tribe of Reuben. Bezer in the wilderness with its pasture lands, Jaza with its pasture lands, Kedemoth with its pasture lands, Mepheth with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Gad, Ramath and Gilead and its pasture lands, Mahanam with its pasture lands, Heshbon with its pasture lands, and Jazer with its pasture lands.
Chapter 7, the genealogy from Issachar. Now the sons of Issachar were four, Tola, Hua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Uzi, Raphael, Raphael, Jeriel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Samuel, heads of their father's households. The sons of Tola were mighty men of valor in their generations, with, and their number in the days of, of David was 22,600. The sons of Uzi was Isariah, and the sons of Isariah were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, Ishiah. All five of them were chief men. With them by their generation, according to their father's households, were 36,000 troops of the army for war, for they had many wives and sons. Their relatives among all the families of Issachar were mighty men of valor, enrolled by genealogy in, 87, 000, in all 87,000. Now the descendants of Benjamin, the sons of Benjamin were three, Bela and Becher and Jediel, Jediai, and the sons of Bela were five, Ebzon, Uz, Uzi, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Eri. The, they were heads of father's households, mighty men of valor, and were 22,034 enrolled by genealogy. The sons of Becher were Zemariah, Joash, Eleazar, Elionai, and Elameth. All these were the sons of Becher. These were enrolled by genealogy according to their generation's heads. Of their father's households, 20,200 mighty men of valor. The son of Jediel Je was Bilhan, and the sons of Bilhan was Jerush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kanana, and Zethan, and Tarshish, and Ahishahar. All these were sons of Jediel, according to the heads of their father's households, 17,200 mighty men of valor who were ready to go out with the army to war. Shepham and Hupham were the sons of Ur. Husham was the son of Aher. Sons of Naphtali. The sons of Naphtali were Jahzeel, Guni, Jezer, Shalom, and the, the sons of Bilha. Descendants of Manasseh. The sons of Manasseh were Azrael, whom his Aramean concubine bore, and bore Machir, the, the father of Gilead. Machir took a wife for Hapam and Shapam, whose sister's name was Makkah, and the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. Makkah, the wife of Makir, bore a son, and she named him Piresh, and the name of his brother was Shirash, and his sons were Ulam and Rakam, and the sons of Ulam were Bidan, and these were the sons of Gilead. The sons of Makir, the sons of Manasseh, his sister Hamalaketh, bore Ishhad, and Abiezer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Achion, and Shechem, and Liki, and Aniam. Descendants of Ephraim, the sons of Ephraim were Shuthalah, and Barad, his son, Teheth, his son, Eliada, his son, Teheth, his son, Zebed, his son. Shuthalah his son, and Ezer and Eliad, whom the men of Gath were born in the land, killed because they came down to take their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned many days, and his relatives came to comfort him. Then he went into his wife, and she conceived and bore a son, and he named him Bariah, because misfortune had come upon his house. His daughter was Shira, who built Lower and upper Beth Horon, also Uzan Shira. Repha, his son, along with Resha, Teya, his son, Te Tehan, his son, Laden, his son, Emihud, his son, Elishama, his son, Nun, his son, and Joshua, his son. Their possessions and settlements were Bethel and with its towns, and to the east, Naran, and to the west, Gezer, with its towns, and Shechem, with its towns. As far as Aya with its towns, and along the borders of the sons of Manasseh, Bashin with its towns, Tanakh with its towns, Megiddo with its towns, Dor with its towns, in these lived the sons of Joseph, the sons of Israel. Descendants of Asher, the sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah, and Sarah, their sister. The sons of 
and, and Sarah in this case was spelled S-E-R-A-H. The sons of Beria were Heber and Melchiel, who was the father of Berze. Now Heber became the father of Jephlet, Shomer, and Hatham, and Ashua, their sister. The sons of Jephlet were Asaph, Bimhal, and Ashbeth. These were the sons of Jephlet. The sons of Shemer were Ahi, Roba, Jehoba, and Aram. The sons of his brother Helam were Zopha, Imna, Shelash, and em, em, I'm sorry, Ahemal. And the sons of Zopha were Sua, Harnifer, Shuel, Beri, and Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ethran, and Bera. The sons of Jether were Jephana, Pispa, and Ara. The sons of Ula were Ara, Haniel, Rizia. All these were the sons of Asher, heads of the fathers' households, choice and mighty men of valor, heads of the princes, and the number of them enrolled by genealogy for service in war was 26,000 men. Chapter 8, the genealogy from Benjamin. And Benjamin became the father of Bila, his firstborn, Ashbel the second, Ahara the third, and Noha the fourth, and Rapha the, the fifth. Bila had sons, Ador, Gera, Abihud, Ab Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephuphan, and Horam. These are the sons of Ehud. These are the heads of the father's households of the inhabitants of Geba, and they carried them into exile to Menahath, namely Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera. He carried them into exile, and he became the father of Uzzah and Ahifud. Shaharam became the father of children in the country of Moab after he had sent away Husham and Bara, his wives. By Hodash, his wife became the father of Jobab, Zibia, Misha, Malcolm, Jews, that's J E U Z. Sakia, Merma, these were his sons, heads of father's households. By Husham, he became the father of Abitub and Elpel. The sons of Elpel were Eber, Misham, and Shemed, who built Ono and Lod with its towns, and Beria and Shema, who were heads of father's households of the inhabitants of Ajalon, who put to flight the inhabitants of Gath and Ahio, Sheshak and Zeramoth, Zab, Zabadiah, Arad, Edor, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were the sons of Beriah. Zebediah, Meshalam, Hizki, Heber, Ishmarai, Isliah, Is and Jobab were the sons of Elpo. Jechem, Zikri, Zabdi, Eliana, Zilathai, Elel, Elel, I'm sorry, Adai, Beriah, Bar and Shimrath were the sons of Shimei. Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Antho, Thija, Ip, Ipdea, and Penuel were the sons of Sheshach, Shem, Sherai, Shehariah, Athaliah, Jerashiah, Elisha, Elijah, Zikri, were the sons of Jeraham. These were the heads of the fathers' households according to their generations, chief men who lived in Jerusalem. Now in Gibeon, Jehiel, the father of Gibeon, lived, and his wife, wife's name was Maka. And his firstborn son was Abdon, then Zer, Kish, Baal, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, and Zakur. Mikloth became the father of Shemaiah, and they also lived with their relatives in Jerusalem opposite their other relatives. Genealogy from King Saul. Ner became the father of Kish, and Kish became the father of Saul, and Saul became the father of Jonathan, Malkishio, Shua, and Abinadab and Eshbel, the son of Jonathan, was Maribel, and Maribel became the father of Micah. You know, actually, that Jonathan's son was Mephibosheth, but it's it's called Maribel. He's called Maribel in this Bible. The sons of Micah were 
Pithon, Melech, Tereia, and Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Jehoiada. Jeho Jehoiada became the father of Elimath, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri became the father of Moza. Moza became the father of Benia. Rapha was his son. Eliasa, his son. Azel, his son. Azel had six sons. And these were their names. As Azakram, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sherei, Obadiah, and Hanan. And these were the sons of Azel. And the sons of Ishak, his brother, were Ulam, his firstborn, Jush, the second, and Eliphalet, the third. The sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons and grandsons, 150 of them. All of these were the sons of Benjamin. Chapter 9, the people of Jerusalem. So all Israel was enrolled by genealogies. Now, this is very interesting. When they were carried off into captivity, these genealogies were pulled out and they identified the people um, by their tribes and, and who they were, who they belonged to uh, when they returned. So it is really important and they really did very uh, thorough rec record keeping. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah was carried away into exile to Babylon for their unfaithfulness and the first who lived in their possessions in their cities were israel the priests the levites and the temple servants some of the sons of judah of the sons of benjamin and the sons of ephraim and manasseh lived in jerusalem uthiah the son of emihud the son of amri the, the son of imri the son of bani from the sons of perez and the sons of judah from the shilonites were at asa the firstborn, and that's A-S-A-I-A-H, the firstborn, and his sons from the sons of Zerah were Jewel and their relatives, 690 of them. From the sons of Benjamin were Salu, the sons of Meshalam, the sons of Hodabiah, and the son of Hasanua, and Ibniah, the son of Jeraham, and Elah, the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, and Meshalam, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah and their relatives according to their generations 956. All these were heads of the father's households according to their father's houses. From the priests were Jediah, Jehoarib, and Jachin, Azariah, the sons of Hilkiah, the sons of Meshalam, the sons of Zadok, the sons of Marioth, the sons of Ahitob, the chief officers of the house of God, and Adiah, the sons of Jeraham, the sons of Asher, the sons of Melchijah and Messiah, the son of Adai, the Adiel, and the son of Jezera, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshulamith, the son of Emer, the, and their relatives, heads of their father's households. 1760 were able men for work of the service of the house of God. The Levites were Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, the son of Azrikam, the son of Hash Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari, and Bakbakar, Heresh, and, and Gela, and Metaniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Gelal, the son of Jedathan, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkina, who lived in the villages of the Netophethites. Now the gatekeepers were Shalom and Akab and Talam, Talman and Ahiman and their relative Shalom the chief. Being stationed until now at the king's gate to the east. These were the gatekeepers for the camp of the sons of, of Levi. Shalom the son of Kor, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah and his relatives of his father's house. The Korahites were over the work of the service keepers of the thresholds of the tent, and their fathers had been over the camp of the Lord keepers of the entrance. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, was ruler over them previously, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshalamiah, that was gatekeeper of the entrance of the tent of meeting. All these who were chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds were these were enrolled by genealogy in their villages whom David and Samuel the seer appointed in their office of trust so they and their sons had charge of the gates of the house of the Lord even the house of the tent 
as guards. The gatekeepers were on the four sides to the east, west, north, and south. Their relatives and their villages were to come in every seven days from time to time to be with them. For the four chief gatekeepers who were Levites were in an office of trust and were over the chambers and over the treasuries in the house of God. They spent the night around the house of God because the watch was committed to them and they were in charge of opening it morning by morning. Now, some of them had charge of the utensils of service for they counted them when they brought them in and when they took them out. Some of them also were appointed over the furniture and over all the utensils of the sanctuary and over the fine flour and the wine and the oil and the frankincense and the spices. Some of the sons of the priests prepared the mixing of the spices. Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom, the Korahite, had the responsibility over the things which were baked in pans. Some of the relatives of the sons of the Korahites were over their showbread to prepare it every Sabbath. Now these are the singers, heads of the father's household of the Levites, who lived in the chamber of the temple free from other service, for they were engaged in their work day and night. These were heads of father's households of the Levites, according to their gen generations, chief men who lived in Jerusalem. Ancestry of the descendants of Saul in Gibeon, Jael, the father of Gibeon, Gibeon lived, and his wife's name was Maka, and his firstborn son was Abdon, then Zerkish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahiho, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth became the father of Shemim, and they also lived with their relatives in Jerusalem opposite their other relatives. Ner became the father of Kish, and Kish became the father of Saul, and Saul became the father of Jonathan, Melchishua, Ab Abinadab, and Eshbel. Now the son of Jonathan was Meribel, Mephibosheth, as we know, and, and Mephibosheth, or Meribel, became the father of Micah. The son of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Teriah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz became the father of Jarrah. And Jarrah became the father of Elamath, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri became the father of Moza. And Moza became the father of Binia and Raphia, his son, Elisa, his son, Azel, his son. Azel had six sons whose names are Azrakam, Bokaru, and Ishmael, and Shariah, Sh Sh Shariah, I should say, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10, Defeat and Death of Saul and His Sons. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closely pursued Saul and his sons, and the Philistines struck down Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. The battle became heavy against Saul, and the archers overtook him, and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, otherwise these uncircumcised will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died. Thus Saul died with his three sons, and all those of his house died together. When all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook this, their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived with them, lived in them. Uh, it came about the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. So they stripped him and took his head and his armor, and sent messengers around the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head in the house of Dagon. Dagon was the god that they had worshipped and had built a house for him. Jabesh Gilead's tribute to Saul. When all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, now remember Saul had come to their rescue before he became king. All the valiant men arose and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh, and they buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his trespass, which he committed against the Lord because of the word of the Lord, which he did not keep, and also because he asked counsel of a medium, making inquiry of it. He went to the witch of Endor. Uh, and did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom of David to the son of Jesse. 
turned the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse, which he had already previously anointed while Saul was actually alive. David made king over all Israel. Notice this chapter 11. Then all Israel gathered at gathered to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, even one when Saul was king, you were the one who led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord your God said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and you shall be prince over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord through Samuel. Jerusalem, the capital city. Now, if ever there is all this craziness about Jerusalem, Jerusalem, um, this is very ancient, that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel by David, which was a long, long, long time ago. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, that is Jebus. It was also had been known as Jebus. And the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there the inhabitants of Jebus, said to David you, David, you shall not enter here. Nevertheless, David captured the stronghold of Zion, that is the city of David. Now, David had said, whoever strikes down a Jebusite first shall be chief and commander. Joab, the son of Zeruah, went up first, so he became chief. Then David dwelt in the stronghold. Therefore, it was called the city of David. He built the city all around him from Milo, the Milo, even to the surrounding area. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. David became greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. This was what he was supposed to do. Uh, David's mighty men. Now these are the heads of the mighty men whom David had, who gave him strong support in his kingdom together with all Israel to make him king, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. These constitute the list of mighty men whom David had. Jashubim, the son of Hakmonite, the chief of the 30, he lifted up his spear against 300 whom he killed at one time. After him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighty men, he was with David at Pas, Pas, I'm sorry, Pastamamim, when the Philistines were gathered together there to battle, and there was a plot of ground full of barley, and the people fled before the Philistines. They took their stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines, and the Lord saved them by a great victory. Now three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David into the cave of Adullam, while the army of the Philistines were camping in the valley of Raphaim. David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. David had a craving and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem which was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, be it far from me before my God that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? For at the risk of their lives, they brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. As for Absh Ab Abshai, the brother of Joab, Abishai, the, the brother of Joab, he was chief of the 30, and he swung a spear against 300 and killed them, and he had a name as well as the 30. Of the three in the second rank, he was the most honored and became their commander. However, he did not attain to the first three. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, mighty indeed, struck down the two sons of Ariel of Moab, he also went down and killed a lion inside a pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits tall. Now in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam, but he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah the son of Jehoiada did, and he had a name as well as the three mighty men. Behold, he was honored among the thirty, but he did not attain the to the three, and David appointed him over his guard. Now the mighty men of the armies were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamoth, the Herorite, the Herorite, I'm sorry, Helez, the Pelonite, 
Ira, the son of Ekesh, the Tekelite, Abiezer, the Anathathite, Sibekai, the Hushathite, Elah, the Ahohite, Maharai, the Netaphathite, and Hilad, the son of Banan, the Netaphathite, and Etha, the son of Ribah, the of Gibeah, of the sons of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Perathonite, Korah, of the brooks of Gosh, Abiel, the Arbathite, and Asmavath, the Berhamite, and Eliaba, the Shalbanite, and the sons of Hashan, the Gizanite, Jonathan, the son of Shagi, the Hararite, and Ahiam, the son of Sakar, the Hararite, Eliphalah, the son of Ur, he for the Mechorathite, and Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hazra, the Carmelite, Narari, the son of Ezbiah, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, the son of Hagri, Zelak, the Ammonite, Nehara, the Berathite, the armor bearer of Joab, the son of Zeruah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Alla, El, ah, and Adina the son of Sheza, the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him. Hanan the son of Maka, and the jo and Jehoshaphat the Myth Mithnite, Uziah the Ashtarothite, Shama and Jeel the sons of Hotham the Ararite, Jediel, the son of Shimri, and Joha, his brother, the Tizite, Eliel, the Mahavite, and Jer Jerabiah, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnim, and Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, and Ohad, and Jesiel, the Mezabite, David's supporters in Ziklag. And now this is chapter 12. Now, these are the ones who came to David at Ziklag while he was re still restricted because of Saul, the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men who helped him in war. They were equipped with bows, using both the right hand and the left to sling stones and to shoot arrows from the bow. They were Saul's kinsmen from Benjamin. The chief was Ahazer, then Joash, the son of Shema, the, Gibe the Gibeathite. And Jaziel and Pelet and the sons of Azameth, Azameveth, and Berka, Berka, and Jehu the Anathathite, and Ishmael the, Gibe the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty. Then Jeremiah, Jahaziel, jo Johanan, Josabad the, the Gedarathite, Elzoza, Jeremoth, Beliah. Shemira, Shemira, I should say, Sheftaya, and Heraphatites, and Elkanah, Ishaya, Azarel, Joazar, Shashobim, and the Korathites, and, the, and Jola, and Zebediah, the sons of Zeraham, and of Gedor. From the Gadites there came over to David in a stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for war, who could handle shield and spear, and whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the gazelles on the mountains. Ezer was the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab that was the third, and Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Attiah the sixth, El Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Macbaniah the eleventh, and these are the sons of Gad, who were captains of the army. Now there's two Jeremiah's there, if you noticed, it's very interesting. Um, these are the ones who crossed, I'm, I'm sorry, the, 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 these are, he, he who was least to be equal to a hundred and great to a thousand. These are the sons of Gad. We're, okay. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks and they put it to flight. All those in the valleys, both to the east and to the west. Then some of the sons of 
Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold to David. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you come peacefully to me to help me, my heart shall be united with you. But if you betray me to my adversary, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look on it and decide. And the spirit came upon Amasiah, who was the chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to him who helps you. Indeed, your God helps you. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. From Manasseh, also some defected to David when he was about to go to battle with the Philistines against Saul, but they did not help them for the Lord of the Philistines after consultation sent him away, saying, At the cost of our heads he, he may defect to his master Saul. And he went to Ziklag there, defected to him from Manasseh, Adna, Josabad, Josabad, Jediel, Michael, jo Josabad, and um, Elihu, Zilpha, captains of thousands who belonged to Manasseh. They helped David against the band of raiders, for they were all mighty men of valor and were captains in the army. For day by day, men came to David to help him until there was a great army like the army of God. Supporters gathered at Hebron. Now there now, these are the numbers of the divisions equipped for war who came to David at Hebron to turn, turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. The sons of Judah who bore shield and spear were 6,800 equipped for war of the sons of Simeon, mighty men of valor for war, 7,100 of the sons of Levi, 4,600. Now Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron and, and with him was 3,700. Also Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and, and of his father's house, 22 captains. Of the sons of Benjamin, Saul's kinsmen, 3,000. For until now, the greatest part of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. Of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800, mighty men of valor, famous men in their father's households. Of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, who were designated by me to come and make David king. Of the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times, with knowledge of what Israel should do, their chiefs were 200, and all their kinsmen were at their command. Of Zebulon, there were 50,000 who went out in the army, who could draw up in battle formation with all kinds of weapons of war, and help David with an undivided heart. Of Naphtali, there were 1,000 captains, and with them 37,000 with shield and spear. Of the Danites, who could draw up in battle formation, there were 28,600. Of Asher, there were 40,000 who went out in the army to draw up in battle formation. From the other side of the Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, there were 120,000 with all kinds of weapons of war for the battle. All these, being men of war, who could draw up in battle formation, came to Hebron with a perfect heart to make David king over all Israel and all the rest of also of Israel were of one mind to make David king. They were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their kinsmen had prepared for them. Moreover, those who were near to them, even as far as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and on oxen, great quantities of flour cakes, fig cakes, and bunches of raisins, wine, oil, oxen, and sheep, there was joy indeed in Israel. Chapter 13, Peril in Transporting the Ark. Then David consulted the captains of the thousands and the hundreds, even with every leader. David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is from the Lord our God, let us send everywhere to our kinsmen who remain in all the land of Israel, also to the priests and Levites who are also with them in their cities with pasture lands that they meet with us and let us bring back the ark of our God to us, for we did not seek it in the days of Saul. Then all the assembly said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel together from the, the Shehor of Egypt, even to the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerem. However, they forgot how to handle the ark, and this is where it went bad. They carried the ark of God on a new cart, from the house of Abinadab and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might. 
even with songs and with lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and with trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark because the oxen nearly upset it. The anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, so he struck him down because he put out his hand to the ark and he died there before God. Then David became angry because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah and he called that place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of God that day, saying, how can I bring the ark? of God home to me. So David did not take the ark with him to the city of David, but took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Thus the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the family of Obed-Edom with all that he had. Chapter 14, David's family enlarged. Now Hiram, king of, of Tyre, sent messengers of David with cedar trees, masons, and carpenters to build a house for him. And David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. And David took more wives at Jerusalem and David became the fathers of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him in Jerusalem. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elapalet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishema, Biliada, and Eliphalet. Philistines defeated. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David, and David heard of it and went out against them. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Raphaim, and David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will you give them into my hand? See, David always inquired of God for the most part in his life. Then the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will give them into your hand. So they came up to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand, like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore, they named that place Baal Perazim. They abandoned their gods there. So David gave the order, and they burned with they they they, they were burned with fire. The Philistines made yet another raid in the valley. David inquired again of God, and God said to him. You shall not go up after them, circle around behind them, and come at them in the front of the balsam trees. It shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then you shall go out to battle, for God will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David did just as God had commanded him, and they struck down the army of the Philistines from Gibeon, even as far as Gezer. Then the fame of David went out into all the lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him on all the nations. So that is the end of our reading for this week from First Chronicles. Next week we are going to complete First Chronicles reading um, chapters 15 through 29. Um, but we're going to recap now quickly. Now as I mentioned, First and Chronicles at one point had been one a scroll. Um, this is, we're, we're now entering the the, the last of the three of the double books of the Old Testament. Um, the books of Chronicles seem to repeat what we have already read in Second Samuel and the book of Kings. So in actuality, it looks as though the chronicler was writing for those who already knew the earlier books of Samuel and Kings. So um, first and second Chronicles takes us from Adam to Nehemiah while giving us the main genealogies of the nation of Israel. These books also give us the main events of the Davidic kingdom, um, also to the time of the captivity of Babylon. Credit for the writing of this book is generally given to Ezra, although there were experts who give partial credit to the prophet Ahijah, Edo, Shemaiah, and Jehu. The theme is the temple, the house of the Lord. The earliest Jewish tradition of the Talmud affirms that Ezra wrote First and Second Chronicles. The closing verse of Second Chronicles uh, are repeated in the opening verses of Ezra, which we will see later. So um, Ezra was a scribe as well as a priest. He played a significant role in the community of exiles who returned to Jerusalem from Babylon. Although we cannot be certain, it is a reasonable 
it, it is reasonable to assume that the chronicler was as Ezra and chronicles may have been written for the people who had returned from the exile in Babylon to rebuild Jerusalem under Ezra and Nehemiah. Chronicles was a link between the post-exiles and pre-exiles. Although the precise date for first and chronicles, second chronicles, uh, is not fully established, it is probably uh, it it came near the end of the fifth century BC. The last recorded event in the closing verses of Second Chronicles is the decree of the Persian king Cyrus to allow the Jews to return to their homeland, and this event was dated 538 BC and gives us the impression that Chronicles was composed shortly after that time. The book of First Chronicles covers the period from Adam to the death of King David around 971 BC. Chronicles covers roughly the same period as the first 10 books of the, the Old Testament. Without the genealogies in First Chronicles, the books cover roughly the same um, time period as First and Second Kings. The specific background of First, of first and Second Chronicles is the period after the exile. During this time, the ancient world was under the control of the powerful Persian Empire. All that remained of the glorious kingdom of King David and Solomon was the tiny province of Judah. The Persians had replaced the monarchy with a provincial government. The Persians permitted God's people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. It was the Persians who sent Nehemiah to govern, govern Jerusalem and rebuild the walls of the city. So we'll get into that in Second Chronicles. So the Chronicles were written to provide encouragement and exhortation also to those that returned. Uh, First and Second Chronicles served as a strong exhortation to motivate God's people to obey the Mosaic Covenant. So a person may question the need for, for the Chronicles since the material had already been covered in First and Second Kings and other Testament other Old Testament books. Though the books are similar, they are by no means identical though. In the same way that there are four Gospels in the New Testament, these are two accounts of the history of God's people. Uh, though Kings and Chronicles are alike in content, they offer two different historical perspectives. The book of Kings was written to those in exile, where Chronicles was written to a post-exilic audience. And the post-exilic people needed to know the right lines on which to reestablish patterns of worship. And if history was not to repeat itself, they needed most of all to be reminded of the greatest lesson their history had to teach. Prosperity and well-being depend, depend absolutely on faithfulness to God. Idolatry and neglect of God's laws always has and always will result in judgment and disaster. So the theme is the temple, the house of the Lord. The Chronicles deals with the matters of the temple that are not mentioned in Samuel and Kings. From First Chronicles um, until the, in the 11th chapter, until the end of the book, we see the reign of David and the preparations that he made for the building of the temple. And the temple was very important to the Jewish people. In addition to being the house of worship where God dwelt among his people, the temple was also the symbol of unity of a nation and a reminder of the nation's high calling, a sign that Jehovah was his, his chosen people. So the relationship of the Chronicles with Samuel and Kings, Samuel and Kings are more biographical, while Chronicles are more statistical. Uh, while Samuel and Kings are more personal, the Chronicles are more official. Both Samuel and Kings give the history of Israel and Judah after the division of the kingdom, while the Chronicles give only the history of Judah after the kingdom was divided. While Samuel and Kings emphasize the throne, the Chronicles emphasize the temple. First and Second Chronicles review the history of the people to apply a very important lesson for them. A nation's response to God is a decisive factor in its history. So the book of of First Chronicles has two main divisions. The first division is nine chapters of genealogy, and that is chapters one through nine, which we read. The genealogies begin with Adam and proceed all the way through to the exile to those who return to Jerusalem. The div this division is often passed over as unimportant. However, just like the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, the genealogy 
strategies formed a foundation for the account that follows. First Chronicles is, is weighted with genealogies to underscore the need for racial and religious purity. The genealogies were carefully selected to highlight the line of David and the tribe of Levi. The second part of First Chronicles, we got into some of that. Um, this is chapters 10 through 29, records the events and accomplishments in the life of King David. So we started to get into that. So of course we have the people of the Lord, chapters one to nine, the anointed of the Lord, chapters 10 to 12, the ark of the Lord, chapters 13 to 16. We covered part of that. We'll cover the rest of that next week and we'll get to the rest of the structure of First Chronicles. So the history of Judah to the captivity, chapters 10, 10 to 36, I'm sorry, that is Second Chronicles. Uh, we'll get to that um, when, when we're reading Second Chronicles. The people of the, of the Lord, even though this is a genealogy, there is more for us to see in this genealogy. We, we see the family tree of the people of Jehovah from the stock of Adam. Three great branches shoot out. They're the sons of Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Now, these are sons of Noah. It was God's purpose that the oldest, Japheth, was passed over and the youngest, Shem, was chosen. We see that God had done that quite, quite a bit. We see Abraham, the youngest of Terah, was chosen. Isaac was chosen over Ishmael. He was the chosen. He was the one that they were waiting for, actually. Um, Jacob was chosen over Esau. And all this genealogy is found in, in chapter 1. Chapter 2, we see the redemptive line go through Jacob to Judah, then to Jesse, then to David. In chapter 3, we see the Davidic line continue down to the last king of Judah. From this point on, chapters 4 to 8, the writer reviews the genealogy of the tribes of Israel and the allotments of land to them in Canaan. The anointed of the, of the Lord we see in chapters 10 to 11. Here we see the beginning of the reign of David, who was God's anointed. David made Jerusalem the cap capital of the nation. David was the king of divine choice, whereas Saul was the king of the people's choice. The Ark of the Lord, um, we see in chapters 13 to 16, the first thing that David did after he became king was to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. To have the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem meant that the presence of the Lord would be there. So we're going to read the rest of that next week. So that is actually a little bit of the recapping of what we just read. And we, we read a lot of genealogy. Absolutely. Father God, we want to thank you for this word. We want to thank you um, for the order of, of this word. And it is important to have statistics as we will see as we continue to read that the return to the land, those just statistics were extremely important to our ancestors in reestablishing uh, the return to Jerusalem and who who belonged in what tribes and and what have you. Father God, we thank you for everything that you do. We give you all of our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. We lift up once again Jerusalem. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying for the peace of Israel. We're lifting up the country of Israel. Continue to watch over them, keep them safe scatter the enemies, confound the enemies, defeat the enemies for them, Father God, for the, their enemies are our enemies too, and your enemies. Father God, we pray, we pray continually for the return of those innocent hostages to their families. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We pray for this nation, the nation of the United States, that we become even stronger for you, God. We stand in the gap for those that are lost. Help us to be your hands and feet on this planet that we can complete the Great Commission, and that is to share the gospel with everyone that we can possibly share it with. And we also pray, pray that the, re the release of the oppression of our brothers and sisters in in other nations that they are being oppressed and not being able to express 
who they are in, in you, Yeshua. We're asking, set the captives free. But we also know that freedom with you is also spiritual because of being born again and saved and whom you, Yeshua, has have set free. We are free indeed. Father God, we thank you when we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We're going to move into our altar call. If you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is an altar call in which you can do so. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ. And his Hebrew name is Yeshua, and it means salvation. Salvation is deliverance from sin and the consequences of sin. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. So if you die in your sin, you are not going to heaven. That is very simple. And the world will tell you there's many ways you can get to heaven. There is only one, and his name is Jesus, Yeshua. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. And that is because he died for each and every one of us. He paid everyone's sin debt in full when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. He was the only perfect choice. The rest of us were born through the line of Adam and we know that the original sin is connected to that. Jesus reversed that curse. So when he died on the cross, he was not born through that line. He was born of a virgin and the spirit of God breathed into her. Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter five, verse eight says, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Yeshua told Nicodemus, and you can read this in in the Gospel of John chapter 3, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's born again through the spirit, through spirit and water. And that's through him. And you can do that right here, right now, today. But you have a choice. Understand, Yeshua is returning again, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Jesus is King, and he will be coming, and there will be no one standing on their feet. They will all bow to King Yeshua. So he paid our sin debt in full. He also, by his wounds, we are healed. He took all our illnesses and afflictions, but he paid all our sin debt in full what is it that we need to do first john chapter 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we need to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness and he will he's already died for you so if you would like to be born again and saved you can say this simple prayer with me right now dear god i come to you today to confess that i'm a sinner and i need a savior And I understand that Savior is Jesus, Yeshua. I believe he died on a cross, was buried, risen again, is sitting at your right hand, and he is coming again to rule and reign as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life today. Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive me of any sins that I've ever committed. And I thank you for paying my sin debt in full. Today, I am declaring you my Lord and my Savior, please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. And I believe through you and you alone that I am saved, healed, born again, set free, saved, delivered from sin and the consequences of sin and healthy in mind, body, and soul. And I pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen and amen. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible. And get a copy of the Bible. Go to Bible Hub, Bible uh, Gateway, and um, you can sample the different versions of the Bible that are out there. And I would say the one that you're most comfortable with is the one that you should purchase and read. 
Okay, get involved in a Bible study in the congregation that you join. You can certainly continue to, to partake of this Bible study. We also have archived four years worth of archives uh, from the English Standard Version to the Tree of Life Version. Those are all archived, two years worth of each of them. We started this version in January. That will go on for two years as, as well. This is our main Bible study. We also have the additional Bible studies of the Tanakh and the Passion Translation that you're, you're more than welcome to listen to and follow along with. So that as far as Bible studies, this is your spiritual food. You need this for your spirit and to grow in the faith. Develop a prayer life. Pray to your Heavenly Father. Also, develop that relationship with your Heavenly Father. You are now born into the family of God, whereby the creator of all things, God Almighty, is your Heavenly Father. He has written his name on you and sealed you with his Holy Spirit. He loves you. So take time. Talk to him. He loves to hear his children talk to him. He is more concerned with relationship than religion. He wants to hear from you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He never slumbers or sleeps. He is there. All you got to do is talk to him and wait. He will He will answer you as well. So we're going to close with the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. Now, just to back up here, Aaron was the high priest at, the, at that time, and his sons were the Levite priests who ministered to the congregation, to the children of Israel. God chose Israel to be his chosen nation. They were his people, and he was their God. He wanted to put his name on them and bless them. He loves to bless. He would rather bless his children than anything else. And he gave specific words on which to speak over them. Now, as I mentioned, when you are born into the family of God, born again and saved, God has put his name on you. You are part of this family of God. God has written his name on you, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is for you as well. I'm going to say it first in Hebrew, then I will say it in English. In Hebrew, it goes like this. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. It is still early enough in the week to say Shavua Tov. Have a good week, everyone. Uh, there will be the other uh, Bible studies that will be available. And don't forget, Tuesday evening, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel. If you do not have the information to access it and you need help, please reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you. God bless each and every one of you. Again, Shavua Tov. Have a good week.